This is BBC One, and now we go over to the Tomorrow's World team for special coverage of the launch of the American Space Shuttle. Well, is today the 20th anniversary of man's first adventure in space when Colonel Yuri Gagarin went into space for the first time turn out to be the day for the American Space Shuttle. There she sits, the picture's coming to you live from pad 39A at the Kennedy Space Center. Columbia, the world's first reusable manned spacecraft. Sitting there as she has since late in December, but now into the final 15 minutes before her first launch. But of course, we've all been here before. It was actually at nine minutes to launch on Friday last that the world got the first hint of the computer hitch which delayed and then cancelled that first attempt to prove that a spaceship can be launched, can orbit and return safely to Earth in a fit state to make the trip again many times. Well, with me yet again here in Britain watching the mission is Geoffrey Pardo, who on Friday so skillfully guided us through the complexities of backup computers and inertial measurement units. Geoffrey, could a similar fate be in store for us even now? Well, not that one, I'm pleased to say. That was a very unusual fault. Um, I don't see any problems, and indeed, I think it's a credit to the vehicle that both yesterday and today, the rest, the principal countdown, has gone so well. And I'm very confident. So, fingers crossed from you. Uh, 13 minutes and 53 seconds, I reckon, to go to lift off. And here with his latest report from uh, the Cape is our man who is watching things at uh, Launch Complex 39A, Kieran Prenderville. Yes, Mike. Hello again from the Cape with the news that we are hoping for a launch on schedule. NASA, as you know, has sorted out Columbia's computer problem, which delayed Friday's launch. The problem being not with the backup computer, as everybody thought, but the four other computers it was designed to keep an eye on. Well, they were working well all right, but late. In fact, they were some 40 milliseconds out of step. And when the backup computer came online at T minus 20, it spotted it. With a rare burst of clarity, NASA scientists explained that the backup computer simply hung up the phone. Because the information it was getting was late, in the eyes of the computer, that information was wrong. So in effect, NASA was left with a situation where four computers were saying one thing, and the fifth was saying another, which left them not a lot of choice. Well, whatever problems we have today, hopefully that won't be one of them. As I say, for the moment, it's all systems go. And when everything is going so smoothly, there's not a lot launch control can do except to try and relax and just wait. Throughout the night, the shuttle stack gleamed like a national monument, which is almost what it's become. It's been on the ground so long. Well, hopefully that will all change before the day is over. The day for John Young, that's him on the left, and Bob Crippen, began with a breakfast of steak and eggs, orange juice and coffee. Both looking a bit tired, but if anything, rather less tense than they did two days ago. John Young on the left there, looking rather the more somber of the two. Young, the veteran of many previous space missions, Apollo and Gemini. And that's the hatch of the orbiter through which the astronauts crawl rather than walk. The suiting room, John Young having his helmet put on. John Young, who incidentally wears glasses even in space, he uses them for what NASA calls close-up work. I bet that's the first time anyone's seen an astronaut about to go on a mission with glasses. On the way now to the van, which will take them to launch pad 39A. Young leading the way. That's Crippen behind. Smiling broadly. He's having a ball by the look of it. Thank you, Kieran. So there they go, two courageous men, and with them go our best wishes. Those pictures recorded a couple of hours ago. We are still, the news is, on course for a launch in a little over 10 minutes. The world's first reusable spacecraft. Here she is, and of course, at liftoff, she will be carrying with her the giant external tank, which carries the fuel for her three main engines built into the spacecraft itself. Alongside the external tank, two solid rocket boosters. Now, at liftoff, all five, three main engines, two boosters, will burn together. 
A little over two minutes later, 30 miles up, the boosters will be spent, they will parachute into the Atlantic. Six minutes or so after that, this giant tank, believe it or not, will be empty, and with Columbia travelling at over 17,000 miles per hour, and then at a height of 75 miles, the tank will be jettisoned to burn up and fall to earth. She will then be on her own, and will go into orbit under the influence of the uh, two tiny engines which make up the orbital manoeuvring system, fueled from on board, and a series of even smaller thruster rockets built into the tail, the side of the spacecraft and into the nose. Now the intention is then a mission of 37 orbits going east from the Cape out over the Atlantic first of all and of course because of the way the Earth is tilted and because we rotate on this planet each orbit will follow a slightly different path. But all being well, 54 and a half hours after liftoff, 37 orbits later Columbia will be on a trajectory which will bring her in over the Pacific for a landfall here in the Mojave Desert, high above Los Angeles in California, at the Dryden Flight Research Center alongside the Edwards Air Force Base. But indeed, I suspect landfall will be a long way from the NASA team responsible for Columbia at the moment. Launch is all that matters now. So let's go to the Cape, live to Kieran, to find out how things are looking at this time. Hello Mike, 2 minus 9 here, the weather is absolutely perfect, no problems at all and so far the countdown has been all but flawless. The computers have now all come online, they all work and when they learnt that over in ground control or launch control I should say there were very loud cheers. There is a rumour buzzing around the Cape at the moment by the way that the Russians are about to put up a spaceship themselves in a bid to steal Columbia Sunder. As you said, today is the 20th anniversary of Yuri Gagarin's first flight, the first ever man in space. Now, this is nothing more than a rumor. It, it may well be mild paranoia, things being as they are. It is, after all, nearly 4 p.m. in central Russia where they launch their spacecraft, and that's very, very late to put anything up. Somewhat unlikely, I think, but, well, who knows? Thank you for that. Thank you for that. We, uh, we can't confirm here in Britain that uh, the Russians plan any activity, but obviously if we get reports of that, you will be the first to hear. For now, we can report that the first test launch of the much-delayed American shuttle is still on the cards for uh, a little over seven minutes from now.